Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to look at how I made the April Fool's joke a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm sorry for that, it was a bit mean, but um, I felt it was necessary. You can't always get something for free without someone picking on you occasionally. Um, so very simply, for those that haven't seen it, the way the, GIMP tutorial, uh, the, way the April Fool's joke worked was um, you're presented with an image that you would want to make more beautiful. Um, in this case I've got a picture of myself. Um, I use this picture because obviously it doesn't really need to be made more beautiful, handsome as I am. So um, you know, it doesn't really matter that this won't work. So basically the way the trick works is when you right click on the image and go to filters and then as you can see up here we've got the beautify effect. Um, but I told people to go to enhance and then beautify. And then when you click on beautify, um, this comes up where it lets you change the handsomeness, the congeniality, the star quality, the winsomeness of eyes, the X factor and the sense of humour. And that was basically all the trick was. Um, and then I said that I wouldn't bother clicking on OK because my laptop runs too slowly and it wouldn't really work. The real reason I didn't want to click on OK was because if I had, you would see this message come up. Error while executing script view beautify error not enough arguments. Now the reason it says that is because it's not a real GIMP script and um, it doesn't really work, it doesn't really exist and you probably could make one that does this but I don't have the programming chops to um, actually make this work. So I'll just um, press OK to that and I'll show you basically how the trick works. So firstly what you need to do is locate your scripts folder um, which will be somewhere in your C drive and um, if you've installed it normally you'll find it in your C drive program files, GIMP, and then depending on what um, version of GIMP you've got, it should be GIMP 2.0 um, because everything after the GIMP 1 series goes into the GIMP 2.0 folder. Uh, share, GIMP, again 2.0, and then scripts. And this is basically where all of your scripts are kept, or all of the default scripts are, are kept. If you download any more scripts that you want to include, um, you can put them straight into this folder, or there's another folder that you can put them in as well, but it really doesn't matter which one you put them in. Um, and basically, uh, if we look over here, you can see the Beautify script. Now, your version won't have this because you haven't made it yet. Um, but I actually based the Beautify script on this one here, the um, Zach effect. Now, the only reason I did that was because it was the last one there. I could have clicked on any of them to make this work. But basically, what you're going to need to do is open up, um, originally, this Zach effect one um, in something that can read it. Now, you can see here that this is a .scm file and that means it's written in the programming language scheme um, which is what a lot of the GIMP scripts are written in um, now at the moment you can see my computer doesn't know what to open these up with um, because I don't have a scheme interpreter installed on my computer so if you try and open this um, it will prompt you to select something to open it with so um, for example when you go to open um, you need to select a program from the list and with anything like this normally you're going to try and open it in something like notepad um, unfortunately notepad does an absolutely horrible job of it so what I would recommend is if you really do want to um, play around with this it's worth getting your hands on um, notepad plus plus which again is open source easy to download just uh, do a google search for it and it will come up it will be the first thing so I don't want to open that in um, in notepad I'm going to open it in notepad plus plus so because I already have it installed I can just click edit with notepad um, but I've already got them opened up here so when you open it up you um, you get all of this information um, which is just a, a comment telling you something about it uh, the original Zach effect script copyright to Adrian uh, Likens or Likens um, and it just tells you some of the the information there and basically when you get down to here and this is all of the, the programming that's required, or all of the scripting that's required to make the, the script work. Now, I'm not going to talk through what any of this means because I only have a very rudimentary knowledge of it myself. But there's a few key things um, that we need to change in order to make our Beautify script. So, basically, I've got the Beautify script um, opened up next to it as well. And you can see here, I haven't really changed anything. I didn't bother because, you know, it was only for a joke. So it's still the Zach Effect script up in the comments and, and such. But what I started to change was anywhere where it said Zach Effect, uh, I need to make sure that I change that to the name of the script that I'm making um, 
a sort of pretend version of. So I went through and I just did a very simple um, find and replace for everything. But you can go through and do it manually if you want as well. So wherever it said Zach effect, I just went to um, the same area, the same line of code, and uh, just replaced it with the word beautify. So very simply, that just means wherever um, the word Zach effect shows up in GIMP, it's now going to be replaced by beautify because all of the same. Uh, it relies on exactly the same place in the GIMP registry. So basically I just go through uh, picking off all of the places where it says Zach effect. So that's all of them just for the main one there. And then when you get through to the script foo register, there's a few more. So there was another Zach effect here that I changed and a Zach effect here. So I had to replace those with Beautify. This one here is a good bit of fun because um, it says here adds a subtle translucent 3D effect to the selected region or alpha. Um, if I just show you what that looks like originally, um, so we go to enhance and then um, where is that effect? Oh, it's not in enhance, it's in light and shadows, I think. So this is when I hover over here um, and it says, as you can see there, um, that tooltip, um, the information that was printed there. Now I actually did the same thing for Beautify. I created one just to make it look a bit more realistic. So when you hover over Beautify, it says it makes you more beautiful. Um, so you can see I did that simply by going to line 122, um, so we just go all the way down to there. And at line 122 I just simply wrote in make you more beautiful. Okay, so the, the trick itself is very, very simple. Um, the final thing, or the second from last thing I had to do, was add it to the script foo uh, menu register, which is what allows us to actually have it show up um, in these two places, so through filters, enhance, and beautify, or by right clicking on the image and going to filters, enhance, and beautify. So as I said in the April Fool's joke, there are two ways of getting to it, uh, and that's because I'd put it into that um, script view um, register. Um, but again, all I did for that, I mean, it wasn't particularly clever, I just rewrote the same thing for the Zach effect. Now the thing that was a little bit clever, if I don't mind saying so myself, um, was the way I'd edited this information here. Okay, now this information here is all of the stuff that comes up in the dialog box, um, and this is the kind of variables that you're allowed to play with when you're using a script. So if I just show you what that looks like with the original Zach effect, um, we go to, where is it, filters and lights and shadow, and then uh, Zach, oh, sorry I pressed the wrong one. Uh, try and do this as quickly as I can. Where we light and shadow and Zach effect. And you can see here we've got highlight X offset, blah 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 blah. Um, and if we see what that actually looks like in the script version, so for example, if we look at color and say this slider, because I think I did everything with sliders afterwards, um, if we go to the original script, you can see SF color. Um, gives us a highlight color and then a, a default value. Um, so SF color just means it's going to come up with one of those color patch boxes and SF adjustment gives us the toggle um, slider. And In fact it was the way I'd um, changed this that created the slider I think if I remember correctly. So all I did for Beautify was I changed all of these to SF adjustment um, because that just made it a lot simpler for me to play with and then I just wrote in the titles that I wanted to come up so handsomeness, congeniality, star quality, winsomeness of eyes and so on. Um, so basically by doing that um, I was able to um, change all of this information into the stuff that came up on the original Beautify script or on the new Beautify script I should say. So just by simply changing those titles, getting rid of the colour boxes um, I was able to make my own box, but then of course it doesn't really work because there's no real programming behind it. Anyway, I hope that's um, at least explained my actions, made it a little bit more um, easy to understand. Like I say, this isn't actually very useful, you're not going to be able to do anything with it apart from fool people or possibly change the names of some of your filters and effects, but I mean really that has quite a limited, um, limited use in terms of what the GIMP's really used for. Anyway, I hope this is a uh, been at least amusing if not helpful and 